All right, uh, this was sent into the channel for review. I actually requested this one. I had done some other reviews for, for, from uh, uh, the company Fenersi, and uh, I enjoyed their products, but when I heard this one was coming out, I really wanted it. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks out to Fenersi for sending this to the channel. Uh, it is a two-channel oscilloscope, um, and it's the first oscilloscope that I saw the specs on that I thought, you know, that's that's not just a toy. That that actually could be a, a decent thing to have. So let's take a look at it. Um, in the box, you get um, you get two uh, pro scope probes, and these are 200 megahertz probes because this is 180 megahertz oscilloscope, at least on paper. 180 dual channel um, comes with a book. Uh, comes with charging cords and stuff like that. So, yeah, let's take a look at the uh, take a look at the unit. Uh, it's a, it's a nice small size, and uh, it's a bit, a bit uh, thick, but uh, ch chargeable battery. Um, let's take a look at the uh, the layout here. I do like their layout. A lot of times the buttons don't make any sense, but this one does. Uh, there's vertical. Uh, uh, gain plus and minus horizontal uh, uh, time base plus and minus trigger level plus and minus so you don't have to find the damn trigger level it's right there on the front uh, there's uh, automatic measurements like peak to peak frequency things like that that's available on a measurement menu the different trigger modes are on a trigger menu and there's a default 50 percent here uh, there's the obligatory auto to find things, and that does work well. There's a menu to get into the uh, bunch of stuff inside. It's got huge menu systems. There's a store, so you can store things um, and recall things. But then there's a, a save right on the front button here, so you can save the uh, save a screenshot or save the actual waveform. Uh, you can hit move to to do a fast move or slow move on all of these buttons down here. And then Origin puts everything, puts the uh, cursors, and, uh, not the cursors, the uh, vertical and horizontal, puts them back to the center. So that's a really nice, that's like a really nice feature there. So it's a two channel with real BNCs. Um, I have an adapter here. It's got a, a USB-C. This is one of those magnetic adapters. I love these things. And then uh, there's a ground and what would normally be the... Uh, calibration clip is actually the function generator so it has a built-in function generator and it can actually record waveforms and play them back on their function generator how's that right uh, our recorder and generator amazing um, it's got a really nice big fat uh, 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 rest so it won't it won't tip over I, I don't like the little thin ones this is a nice big fat one so they uh, they learn somewhere that that's what you need. Uh, this is a little bit uh, rubbery here, but it's plasticky here. I don't think I would want to drop this thing. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's look at some waveforms. Okay, I'm just going to show you some random waveforms here. These came out of my uh, HP uh, Arb. Arbitrary waveform generator. It has a bunch of stuff built into it. So we can just, just take a look at uh, the uh, quality of the display here. And then we'll take a look at the rise time. It says it's 180 megahertz. We'll look at the rise time. Um, I'm using a Tektronix um, test board. It's a oscilloscope test board and I think it has a 70 picosecond rise time uh, edge and it, it's uh, definitely coming in at around a nanosecond into the uh, into the oscilloscope. So let's put in uh, a sine wave of 180 megahertz here and adjust it. I think um, it, it barely squeaks 180 megahertz. Uh, I would be comfortably using this to 140 megahertz and then uh, from 140 to 180 it, it, it will you know it has a few glitches and timing and stuff but um, 140 it's rock solid let's take a look at some AM modulation because this um, oscilloscope is claimed to be digital phosphor that was kind of coined by Tektronix back in the day 
And you can see it has nice grading. It has a, a intensity grading for uh, things like AM modulation. It also has false color, so you can turn that on. So now it's looking kind of like a real oscilloscope with false color and grading and all other stuff. Um, it has a zoom function, and it has quite a large memory depth. Uh, I was really quite shocked on that. So the memory depth is good, and you can you can have two different uh, settings for the uh, uh, two different uh, horizontal settings for the zoom. Right, the slow slow one that you've captured, and then you can zoom in on the uh, on a segment. And then let's do the same thing with a random digital signal. So here we have a pulse train, and we can zoom in on that pulse train to look at individual events and stuff. And again, it's got great memory depth. It says it had XY mode. I was really shocked about that. And I said, okay, because XY mode is not easy on digital oscilloscopes. And this one does it really well. Um, I put on my Lorentz attractor and it's doing great. Here I've turned on the false color and it's even better. So yeah, it's doing, it's doing good. I put on my uh, calibration stair step here and um, it seems to have a, it, it's, it's like a, there's a vertical gain miscalibration. It seems like maybe there's a little bit of non-linearity at the top end, um, where you, the linearity at the bottom end seems to be okay, but it seems to be a little bit low in gain at the, at the top end. And I, I don't know if that's calibratable out or, um, but it does seem to have a little bit of vertical gain error. So you can take screenshots. Let me show you a bunch of those. Uh, those are available uh, with the USB. You go into the menu system and you put it into a, a USB transfer mode, and then it looks like a uh, thumb drive to your computer, and you can pull off uh, both um, the uh, screenshots and the waveforms. I'm not sure what format the waveforms are in, but those, those are available. I believe they have software that runs on your computer, so you can... Uh, move those into some software. I haven't, I haven't tried that. It actually has FFT. Now, it has FFT just to say it has FFT. I don't think it's very usable, but um, this is as good as I could get. I, I put in some AM modulation. You can look at the two sidebands for the AM. And I mean, it is there, but I don't think it's very, I don't think it's very usable. Let me show you a bunch of the of the menus here. I did screenshots of a bunch of the menus, and you can see there's all kinds of things you can configure. Um, you can set this thing up into all different modes. When you turn the device on and off, it forgets that. But there is a menu setting where you can save the current default, um, the current setting as default. So the next time you power it up, it's exactly where it was. So, so that's good. And then, like I said, it has this uh, generator that's got several waveforms built into it, quite a few actually. Um, and it has the ability to record waveforms and play them back. So that's pretty cool.
So yeah, I really like this thing. I have it hooked up to its own its own generator here just to take a look at a signal. And so uh, yeah, it's very zoomy as far as uh, pushing the buttons. It's very responsive. Uh, and uh, yeah, set the uh, just set the trigger level. Yeah, it acts like a regular oscilloscope. So very very cool. Uh, I do like this thing. So uh, there you go. That was my review. Um, if a lot of people are going to say, oh, take it apart, take it apart. Um, if you go search on YouTube, um, EEV Block uh, did a video of these and where he does a teardown. And um, uh, what's the guy's first name? Wong. Uh, his channel, he, he did a teardown also of, of this instrument. So I'll let, them, uh, I'll let them do that. But anyway, this is my review of the DPOX180H. Phosphor and Zoom. Uh, yeah, I like it.